Hold my head a bit higher I lift my voice a bit louder Yeah, something inside has changed Regarding discipleship and maturity And I felt like last Friday the Lord literally drew a line in the sand And said, it's just time to grow up And so we want to, it's a family day, so we're going to just talk about this because we as the generals want to represent Jesus and look, have his attributes and everything that we do. You're okay, you can just sit there. Or you can move if you want, you don't have to. Um, so he started talking to me about some things that Part of maturity, we have to look at our choices. Choices that we've made, why we might be in the place that we're in. Choices both for God or for ourselves. Does that make sense? He's calling us to make mature choices. And he's calling us to obedience in all things of him. And um, I, have, I know of and aware of friends in my circle, whether here or other places, that still live in a place of being a victim. But you can't be mature in the Lord and be a victim. Does that make sense? Yes. Now people are going to say, well, you don't know what I've been through. And I guarantee you, you can always find someone that's been through some worse things than you. We have a choice to stay in that place or not. Now, I'm going to be transparent in a lot of things today that I could have been a victim in. I was raised in a broken home. I had an absent father that went on a business trip and didn't come back. I could still be a victim. I got raped when I was 18. I could be a victim. I've had slanderous, slanderous things said against me by the body of Christ. <laughs> I have a lot of places I could stay in victimness. Woe is me. You don't understand. Well, yeah, I do understand. We have choices to make that we're going to choose God. And he is my healer and he is my defense. And if you're repeating story after story after story of your brokenness, you're a victim. Does that make sense? Yes. Because you should be moving forward. There should be fruit in your life. When those stories keep repeating of this victim thing, this victim thing, this victim thing, it's poison. It's poison to you and all the people you keep talking to about it. Now, I'm not saying you say it once because you need healing. Hey, man, this is happening to me. I need to get out of it then get out of it. You get prayer, you get out of it. Forgiveness isn't that I forgave something, but I talk about it forevermore. You miss something in forgiveness. Forgiveness is that it's gone. You shouldn't be repeating the story. And if the hurt starts coming up, then you give it to the Lord. I'm saying this because I love you, and I love us, and I want us to be in a place of health that we cannot be talking about our brothers and sisters at all. And I've been hearing it. I'm just saying. And we had a specific word a while back about what will take us down will be the words that we speak. Now, I'm not saying this to condemn anybody. I'm not saying this for anybody to feel guilty. I'm saying this that we have choices to make and we need to make good choices. We are family. We are knitted together by Jesus. The day we asked him in connected us. We're going to have all eternity together. So we better learn to love each other. We need to start looking to see the destiny in each other through the eyes of Jesus so we can talk about those things. The amazing things we see in each other. Because, like, I don't know if you were here early. If you're not, you should get here early. I'm just saying. Yeah. 
But Ginger led us in our morning prayer this morning, and she took us to heaven. We could have all have gone home after that. It was amazing. So if you're coming late, you're missing out on some really good stuff. We start at that at about quarter till ten. So I'm just saying, being late is not a good thing. We were already taken off. It was amazing. Highly gifted. Was she insecure when we gave her the microphone? Well, scared to death, I think, maybe. But we see in her this anointing that she can stir in. You know why? Because we see the intimacy she has with God. And because you have that, we can trust you. Does that make sense? Amen. The thing David Amen. said yesterday, uh, last Friday, that caught me that is, if you don't have intimacy with the Lord, you are not a disciple. So you need to check that. We know each other. We can see if you're intimate with God. You can see it on people. You can see, like Maureen, where are you? She walks in sometimes, and I'm like, she's like glowing. It's hilarious, and I'm like, man, she's just been with a father. You can see it on people. Like, where's Mark? He's back there. Such a change from when I first met you. Not that you weren't already saved, because you were. But you've come into this more intimate place that when I see you, I go, oh, man, I know he spends time with the Father. I can Amen. trust you. Amen. Does that make sense? Amen. Looking at fruit, it's looking at people's fruit. Fruit comes from an intimate place. Amen. If you're not in an intimate place with the Lord, then your fruit kind of looks like raisins. <laughs> it's depleted. It's not pumped up, it's dried out. It's like the fig tree that had the bad figs. If you have been spending time with the Lord, we see it in each other, and we trust that in each other. Like Zenobia, what a change. And I've yes. known you for a while, man. You, you're glowing now. You've come to a place where your identity is starting to get solidified in who you are in Christ. Yes. Because you're choosing God. It's a choice. You could have stayed in victimhood. But why? Doesn't this feel better? Way better. Yeah. It's amazing. I just saw, you know, I'm seeing people. Aaron, I hardly know you, but man, what? You're a powerhouse. Yes. A powerhouse. And so needed in the body of Christ. Because you're coming from a place of love. You're not coming from any place of arrogance. You're coming from a place from humility. When someone comes and tells me, oh, you you got to know I'm a leader and I'm going to lead all of you. You're going to go, mm -hmm. you're going to look at fruit. Amen. First of all, there should be people following already. Does that make sense? Yeah. Then we're walking in pride. <clears throat> it's time for us to grow up and understand the depth of who we are as sons and daughters of the living God that aren't sucking on bottles still. Everybody that is in this room right now, I have seen you for at least a few months, some years, some lots of years, and you should be changing. You should not look the same to me that I saw you six years ago. That's right. I mean, Rebecca, look at you. You're having encounter after encounter after encounter. I mean, like... Talk to this girl sometimes. Yeah, yeah. Amen. She has these amazing encounters. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. Don't and she know? knows she's loved. Yes. Amen. And it's yes. changing everything. Like when you walked yes. up last Friday, it's Amen. the first time I've seen you walk to the center of the room. Amen. Because God is giving you confidence. Right. And things are changing. Amen. Thank you, Lord. And I've known you for a while. Mm -hmm. You are like a mystery of Amen. what God is doing in you. It's a, it's a beautiful. It's yes. beautiful. Amen. Because she's saying yes. Yeah. Sue, you are the biggest warrior that I've ever seen probably in my lifetime. Yeah. You walked through being sick when most people didn't even know you were sick. Amen. When you could barely stand up straight or you felt like you were going to get sick, but you came here and you stood. Amen. You stood. For four years you were in that. And some people, don't even, they don't even know she was sick. Well, she's healed. Praise God. Yes, that's right. She is. That's right. 
but faithful. Do you see maturity here? Do you see yes. where people are growing up and they're choosing the Lord? They're choosing health. Help. Ed, you amazed me from when I first met you. Because when I first met you, when you first came to the generals, you barely, you were nervous kind of when you'd come in for prayer. And maybe because you were new, and I get that. But now you're like a solid rock. I mean, a foundation of the word and the love of Christ. It's amazing. And we count on that. Amen. I know that when you're going to say something, i got to make sure I'm going to listen. Amen. That's awesome. Michelle, I know that your track has been here for a long time and you've been working, working, working at your salvation to be healthy ever since I've known you. It's good. Yeah. It's healthy. She's probably one of the healthiest pearls. <laughs> pearls are people that they love everything. They love the animals, people. They hug on you. They love you. They'll hug you really long and you get uncomfortable in the hug. <laughs> But they get hurt really easy because people will take advantage of them. She's a healthy one. She knows how to set boundaries, and that is blessing. That's maturity. Yes, it is. That is maturity. I mean, I can talk about all of you because I've seen all kinds of things. I can name you, but I, what I, the reason I'm doing that is because some of us haven't grown much, and some of us have grown by leaps and bounds. It's a choice. It is a choice. I surrounded myself around people that were healthy and could speak into me. And I could speak into them. It was a choice to choose different friends. It was a choice to change my circle of fear of influence and people that talked to me because I wanted to grow up. My daughter did the same thing. She left everybody her age and started hanging out with us because she wanted to grow up. Now she's got people more her age that are hungry for God coming into her life and around her, which is great, but she had to make a choice to change everything to get in a healthier place. Does that make sense? Yes. If we're doing the same behavior that we did six years ago, two years ago, yesterday, we're not growing up. We have to look at fruit. We have to look at our character. My hu This is just out there in case any of you have trouble on the freeway. <laughs> you know, cursing the driver in front of you or anything like that by the words that just came out of your mouth. My husband and a friend of ours that we know, um, whenever they start feeling that way, they pray for the other person because they both have had to get healed in that. And they made a pack that whenever I start operating on a guy, I start praying for you. Because yeah. they wanted to grow up in it. Does that make sense? Yeah. We have choices to make. If there's an area in your life that there is um, not reflecting Christ, then we need to work on that. And I was talking about this on you know, Wednesday night a while back. <clears throat> to get your identity solidified in him, you need to find friends that you let them speak into what blind spots you might have. And you've got to be willing to listen and change. Because if you're not aware of your blind spots, and your blind spot might be really highly annoying, but you aren't aware of it, you, you want friends to be able to speak into that because you want that part of your life to reflect Jesus as well. Does that make sense? So I did that. I have some really good friends that I talk to, and this is what we do. And I just challenge you to do this with your friends. Get a group of maybe four people that you love and that you know love you. Ask them, what are my attributes? The things that look like Christ. Let them write all those things out. What are some things that I could change that look like they need to be refined and I need to operate in a little better let them write them out. You will find out things about yourself that really probably God has already been speaking to you about, but you didn't think anybody else saw it. It's a good thing to do. It keeps us accountable and it gets us to grow up because there's things about us we, we don't see. Is that, you hearing me? Yeah, yeah. 
I'm talking like this because I want us as the generals to look like Jesus. And if we're the body of Christ, then we all need to be pursuing health. Because we're connected. When the world sees us, they see us together. And right now, the body of Christ hasn't represented itself that well. And I feel like in the season we're in, we need to become mature. We need to start reflecting and having the attributes of Jesus in all areas of our life, not just when we're at the generals. When you're sitting in front of the TV, you can't yell at it. I mean, you know what I'm saying? If it's causing emotional reactions of anger when you watch the news, and you're calling them idiots for believing what, you know, I mean, you, we're throwing our words out all over the place. We're throwing curses into the air. We need to be responsible for our choices. Because out of your heart, what comes out of your heart is what speaks. So you got to look, there's something in my heart. If I'm being triggered with anger, if I'm being triggered, I feel like a victim. If I'm being triggered that I need to say things to be noticed. If I'm yelling at, it's the heart. We need to have heart check. We need to check to see what's in our heart. And I'm saying this because I love you. I'm not saying this to condemn anybody. I'm not saying this to say anybody's wrong. I'm saying it to give you an opportunity that we make changes. I'm speaking to myself, too. We have changes to make to start looking more like Christ. We need to let them love those something that triggered whatever. I have found that if I get offended, I need to walk away and go, why am I offended? What is it in me that has caused me to think I should be offended? It isn't the other person's responsibility. We like to blame all these other people because they said these horrible things, but it isn't that. Why is it triggering something in me? And you have to ask those questions. They're not easy questions to ask, but we're responsible. We're going to be responsible if we're not in a good place is because we put ourselves there. We didn't choose. We chose the broken place instead of the God place. We chose to agree with some demon we picked up when we were younger and we decided to make it our best friend and we walked with it for years. Does that make sense? Yeah. Familiar spirits. Yeah. It's time we get rid of that stuff. That's right. Yeah, that's right. It is just really time <laughs> we get rid of that stuff. And Alan, I have to point you out. You are growing so much in the Lord. You can see the joy of the Lord on your face. Amen. Amen. And I love that about you. What God was doing with you up here was beautiful today. I could hardly stand next to you because it was so powerful. But you are growing. You're making the right choices. I see you choose all different meetings, whether anybody's there you know or not. You're making great choices. Just want to confirm that in you. Because it's a good thing. Because choices, really right, they determine where you are. I do. And I'm saying that because I love you. I know that we, the reason I wanted to do worship at the end today, I want us to give, some, give us some time to have worship <laughs> our God and give some things away <coughs> that we need to give away. Because he wants to put some things in. You know, when you get rid of these things that have, like, for instance, if you're someone that's been a victim for a very long time, how great is it when he puts in the overcomer? There you go. That's what he calls us. We are overcomers, but if we don't receive it, we don't walk in it, right? So today I felt like we were going to worship the Lord and do some exchanges. Right? I don't want to yell at the TV or cars going down the road or curse people because I, they disagree with me. And if we are, then I need some exchanges. Because I need to start seeing them, Lord, like you see them so I can speak blessing into them. There's no way the blinders are going to come off our world if we don't start speaking truth into what God says about them. It's really hard for someone to keep yelling at you when you go, oh my gosh, you know how I see you are. You're this is amazing, beautiful person that just loves to pray for people. And you love it when you get to see the breakthrough. When you see them come out of it, it's the most amazing thing, and they're trying to yell at you. It doesn't work. 
Because you're beautiful in Him and He loves you so deeply. And when you look at people, you see the joy in them. It's part of your DNA. You can't help it. It'd make it really hard for you to yell at me, wouldn't it? And by the way, that was true about you. Because I can see. We do that in the world, it's going to trip people out. I mean, everywhere. If they're angry and they're you know, ready to spit on you, and you're going, you know what, I can, this is what I see. See past the demons. See past it all. <laughs> see what God intended and pull it out. We can do it. because, But we can't do it if we're not getting mature in who we are because you'll be offended before you even say anything and then you'll say the wrong thing. We see it all over our world right now. That offended me, so I'm going to call you this. And we get these yelling matches and no one, they're not productive. <laughs> Didn't produce anything. But what if they're yelling at you and you see who they are made in Christ and you just start speaking it into them? Wow. Can you feel it? That will change our world. But we don't see if we have things blocking our sight or if our eyes are watching things they should not be watching or if our ears are listening to things they shouldn't be listening to. Like if someone starts telling you something and you get engaged in their gossip, you're as guilty as the person gossiping. You need to stop it. Walk away from it. No, my ears can't hear those things. You know what I mean? We need to protect our ear gate, our eye gate, and what comes out of our mouth. That's right. There's a lot of things I cannot watch. I just cannot. I can't hear it. I mean, like, things that, that well, I'll be watching some innocent show, and something will come on, and I'm like, ah! I can't watch it. I have to protect my eye gate, because I know that about who I am. I want to see, and if I have other things in my eyes, I can't see. Making sense? That's, it's part of maturity. It's part of us growing up and taking aware, being aware of all that God's doing in us. So, we're going to do an exchange program today. Family. We're going to come to the dinner table. We're going to come and eat with the Lord. And we're going to give him some things that he needs because we shouldn't have been carrying them because he paid for them and we didn't, so we need to give them away and ask for forgiveness that we carried, them, carried it when we shouldn't have. And then we need to do the exchange. We need to say, Lord, what do you want to put in? And he will put in. That's his favorite part. Okay? Mm -hmm. Let's see how we want to do this. Put some music on without words so people can just spend some time with God. We're going to do this in your seats. And then... This group is called the Generals. And I didn't name this group. God named this group. It was in Jill Austin's book. She said, how do you take out a vast army? You take out, kill. They're high-ranking officers and they're generals. It takes, I think, about 20 years to become a general. Become a general, somebody's become very intentional. They've become very committed. They've given their life. And I think it's almost safe to say that's everybody in this room. So today's about calling you to a higher, yeah. a higher standard. Yes. And I'm wearing the colors and stuff, but I need to walk the walk, talk the talk. Yeah. I need to walk in the fullest of my power, my authority, and my maturity. The world is so been longing to see the church be the body of Christ. Yeah. So that's what we're talking about. We're saying take it up. If there's stuff that you're doing, you have. To get rid of it, we're making room for that today. And I think it's safe to say that nobody's kind of put this kind of uh, demand on you. Well, I will, and the Lord did. He says, I want more. And he didn't say I want more. He said, I want all. Yeah. I want it all. I think we might have that song. I want it all. And so that's what this is about today, is maybe a new, fresh commitment of where you are. Maybe I'm not at a bad place. But guess what? Yeah. Yeah. There's more. And when I work all this out with him, you know what? Then there will be a deeper. And then there will be a higher. <laughs> and then there will be a deeper because that's just the way he is. You should never grow stagnant in this walk. Ever, 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 ever. 
because there will always be more. Amen. And there will always be deeper. Ooh, yes, Father. So that's what Kim's talking about. Okay, so let's just take this time. I want you all just to close your eyes and get before the Lord. Just ask Him. a bit higher, I lift my voice a bit louder, yeah, something inside has changed.